Miklaswara, in the Hungarian-speaking area of Carpathia, is a small village near Baralt. I've come here to meet Transylvanian Count Tibor Kalnoki, who is transforming the local community by converting disused homes into traditional guest houses and offering visitors the chance to step back in time. Tibor, hi. Welcome, Charlie. Good to see you. This is the most impressive hunting lodge. Yes, it's 500 years old and it's been uh, abandoned for the last 50 or 60 years and we're now starting slowly one step after the other to restore it. There must be a huge amount involved in, in restoring a place of, of this size. Yes, first a lot of research to see how it has been before and, uh, and then the techniques, the old techniques have to be used so it's, it's quite, uh, quite a big job. So you're doing everything in the traditional way? By hand. By hand. How many buildings have you got in the village? Cause in this village there are six houses with barns and all the, you know, all the other buildings around it and then the manor with, uh, with its domain. So it's, uh, if we take the buildings themselves it's something like uh, a dozen of, of so buildings. So you're creating quite a space for people to come and stay and experience the village life here. I know this is just open pasture but it does feel like we're in some great park. Yes, these, these wonderful uh, trees, which are hundreds of years old, have been giving shade to the cattle, and that's why they're here. They're here. And they're mostly oak, it seems to me. Right? Mostly oak, and some of them are over 500 years old. Tell me the history of your village. I mean, you, your family has been associated with this area for nearly a thousand years, haven't they? Well, the village itself is the oldest of the whole region of the Sekla land, as we call our region, which is populated by the Seklas. Um, and it's going to have its 800th anniversary this year. The family is, uh, is slightly younger. They came only 40 years later, so it's something like 760 years now. A relative newcomers. Yes, 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 absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and you were living in exile for quite some time during Ceausescu's reign. Yes. You then got the go-ahead to come back. Exactly. So I, was, I, I, was, I was raised mainly in France because my grandfather had already to leave um, just before the Second World War, actually as an anti-fascist. Poor man, he was anti-fascist and anti-communist and was born in 1900, so he had a difficult life. He was ahead of his time. Yes. I came back in the 90s and uh, started to sue the state uh, for illegal uh, expropriation and I, I won some of the cases, but we don't have enough land to make a living from. So we decided um, uh, to live from, from tourism because it's, uh, it's the ideal way also to support the villagers themselves. For example, in our guest houses we employ more people than we have beds and it's very um, popular within the, the village because the way we employ people allows them to keep their farms. If they would go to the city, they would have to give up their farms and, and their way of living. Time. Exactly. So this is just the right way for them to earn an extra living, but to, to keep their own uh, lifestyle. And not compromise that. Exactly. Do you think that this, this wonderful way of life, do you think it's, it's doomed? Is it inevitable that it will die out? Uh, I hope not. You know, um, I've seen in America and also already in England also reenactments of, uh, you know, in, in, in open air museums, um, people get dressed and then they reenact uh, ways of life they think it might have been a uh, hundred years earlier. Well, here this is not necessary yet because we're still, it's still happening. But it, it is so important to keep it going because once we lose it, um, it'll be lost. Gone forever. Gone forever. The next morning, Tibor and I took a trip to the even more remote village of Zalampatak, where he's been working closely with His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales to restore several properties as examples of how rural tourism can benefit local communities without impacting on the environment. One thing about Romania that I always find surprising is you drive down these roads in the middle of nowhere and you come to these little pockets of civilization. And then and you have you something are. like this. And you have yes. something like this yes. at the end of it. Have a look at the main house. We have uh, three rooms here. It's been quite some painstaking work uh, restoring all this furniture. And your carpenters did the veneers and did all of this? Yes, yes, and the polishing and the upholstery and everything. And Fair. even these electrical fittings have been, had to be restored. And the paintings? Paintings. Um, most of the paintings have been uh, hand-picked by HRH. I love this. This is a carpet, presumably. Yes, original. these are Turkish and Caucasian antique carpets. Once they, they are too old to be kept on the floor, we put them on the, on the walls. Well, it lends a warmth to the room. Absolutely. Which I, I, I imagine you need in the middle of winter, because it gets quite Definitely. cold here, doesn't it? <laughs> exactly, you've got it right, <laughs> yes. I've seen this colour on certain buildings in parts of Spain. Is this a traditional uh, lime wash here? 
Yes, here it's called Transylvanian Blue, and uh, it's a uh, um, characteristic here for serfs houses, for stables, for houses that are not dwelling houses. So this is the old stable building, which we converted a bit to, uh, to a more comfortable place. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> well, it's a fabulous place to come and hide away. What's the inscription there? I got the Wales bit. <laughs> yes, it's a tradition to, uh, to document the dates of uh, building and renovation in houses in the main beams. So this one reads, uh, this house has been renovated by Count Thibaut Karnoki in 2009 for the Prince of Wales. Uh -huh. It's so satisfying watching craftsmen at work. It's immaculate when they put the tiles in. <laughs> yes, I wonder how they get it right. It's, it's not so obvious, actually. No, it is like doing a jigsaw puzzle right yeah. now, I think. Tell me, Tibor, why did the Prince of Wales fall in love with this particular place? I mean, I can see it's very beautiful, but why here? I, I suppose it is because it's a place where the local population still lives in total harmony with the environment, with nature. And it, it is not complete and total wilderness like up in the mountains. It is actually handmade, but it is the perfect cohabitation of man with nature. It's easy to forget in such comfortable surroundings that the forest is still only a few feet away from the back door. A fact I was reminded of when I took a quick stroll in the adjacent hills. Walking up through fields of orchids along the edge of the tree line, you are completely immersed in the natural world. I never dreamt that I would actually see bears in the wild outside a bear hide. But here was a sight I'd been hoping for all along. Proof that man has yet to ruin this pristine and innocent landscape. This is incredible. I can't believe my luck. Look. This is why the Carpathian forests, mountains and villages need to be preserved in all their untamed glory. Not just for the benefit of future generations, but to ensure the survival of Europe's most endangered carnivores. If something isn't done, then this verdant paradise will become as ecologically barren as the highlands of Scotland. Once covered by magnificent forests of oak, beech and pine, now bare with new saplings grazed into submission by a wildly inflated deer population. But it's here I've come, on the last leg of my journey, to meet one of Carpathia's greatest crusaders, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. The key thing I, I think about Romania, and Transylvania in, in, in particular, is, is that there's so much we can learn from, it seems to me. It is the last corner of Europe where you see true sustainability and uh, complete resilience and the, and the maintenance of, of, of entire ecosystems to the, for the benefit of mankind but, and also for nature. And we, there's so much we, we must learn from that before it's too late, I think. So presumably this is why it's so important to preserve it for the future? Well, I think so, but you know, people will say, oh, well, you know, she's just trying mm. to preserve things in aspic, or you're trying to prevent progress and yeah. so on. But you'd think by now we might have learned a few lessons mm. from the things that have gone wrong with uh, an agri-industrial approach to everything. Because the, the great thing, it seems to me, about Transylvania is the combination of natural ecosystems the forests and the agricultural areas, together with the, the human uh, cultural systems. And it's this extraordinarily unique, uh, integrated relationship, which is of such huge importance. Once you pull it all apart, you're left with something which can just be exploited without being treated in a sustainable way, if you see what I mean. Because if you cut down great swathes of the Carpathian natural forest, you're actually destroying one of nature's great services to the rest of mankind in terms of carbon sequestration. Given the fact that the rise of industry and agriculture has led to the almost total destruction of the great forest of Caledon here in Scotland, do you think that there's a way of stopping the same thing from happening in Romania? Well, we well, should be clever enough, wouldn't you think, by now, and wise enough to... We'd hope. <laughs> some possible lessons to be learned in, in avoiding that from happening. But otherwise, mm. if we just go on the same way, you end up with destruction occurring, mm. and then people later on are saying, hang on a minute, you've got to try and put this back. What is the point of running into 
a proverbial brick wall, this time of such a painful sort, that by the time we realize that we have to redesign our food systems and put nature back at the heart of the whole process in order to provide us with what we, we take for granted, how, do we, how are we going to be able to put it back? Yeah. So I think Transylvania is an absolutely key issue that has to be addressed. What do you love the most about Romania? It's the timelessness of it, which is so remarkable. And almost out of some of those stories one used to read as a child, it's, it's quite remarkable. People are yearning for that sense of belonging and identity and meaning. And we have to find, we have to rediscover some of these aspects of the way we produce food and live with and maintain and give back to nature if we are to make sure this whole you know, system continues. And that's why human cultural systems matter, because they're intimately linked to that aspect of nature. It's in us, but we've somehow denied it and thrown it away and said it doesn't matter, it doesn't exist, it's irrelevant. It isn't irrelevant. It nourishes the soul and the heart, absolutely. <laughs> that's what Romania does for yes. you. <laughs> but 